I was scrolling through Tinder, swiping left and right, trying to find someone to match with. Suddenly, I saw her profile. She was beautiful, with piercing green eyes and a warm smile. I quickly swiped right, hoping she would do the same. To my surprise, we were a match. I messaged her immediately, trying to make conversation. She responded quickly, and we hit it off. We talked about our interests and hobbies, and she seemed like the perfect match for me. We decided to meet up at a local grocery store, as we both needed to do some shopping. I arrived at the store first, feeling nervous and excited at the same time. I walked up and down the aisles, trying to find the perfect snack to bring to our date. As I was browsing through the chips section, I saw her. She was standing at the end of the aisle, staring straight at me. My heart raced as I walked towards her, trying to maintain my composure. Hey, I'm so glad we finally get to meet, I said, smiling nervously. But something was off. Her smile seemed forced, and her eyes looked cold and distant. I started to feel a sense of unease, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. We continued to chat as we walked around the store, but the feeling of unease grew stronger with each passing minute. It was as if she was watching me, studying my every move. Suddenly, she grabbed my arm and whispered in my ear, I've been waiting for you, I. My heart stopped as I realized she knew my name, despite never telling her. I tried to pull away, but her grip was too strong. I've been watching you, I. You're the perfect match for me, she said, her eyes glinting with a dark intensity. I felt a cold sweat break out on my forehead as I realized that I was in danger. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I was trapped, with no escape. As she dragged me towards the exit, I knew that I was in for a nightmarish experience that I would never forget. I had fallen into the clutches of a deranged stalker, and there was no way out. As she pulled me out of the store and into the parking lot, I struggled to break free from her grip. But her strength was astonishing, and I felt like I was a mere puppet in her grasp. She led me to her car and shoved me into the passenger seat, locking the doors. I was completely helpless, at the mercy of this madwoman. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, she said, her eyes flashing with a manic glee. I knew that you were the one for me, I. We were meant to be together. I tried to reason with her, to plead with her to let me go. But she was beyond reason, beyond compassion. She was a monster, a creature of pure evil. As she drove to an unknown destination, I felt like I was descending into a nightmare world. I was trapped, with no hope of escape. The only thing I could do was to pray for a miracle. Hours passed, and we arrived at a secluded cabin in the woods. She dragged me inside, locking the door behind us. The interior was dark and foreboding, with no signs of life or humanity. She tied me to a chair, her eyes blazing with a fierce intensity. I knew that I was in grave danger, that my life was hanging by a thread. I'm going to make you mine, I, she said, her voice dripping with madness. We're going to be together forever, no matter what. I felt a cold chill run down my spine as I realized that I was about to become a victim of a psychopath. I tried to break free from the ropes, but they were too tight. As she approached me with a sharp knife, I knew that this was the end. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for the final blow. But then, something unexpected happened. A loud knock echoed through the cabin, followed by a police siren. The door burst open, and a team of officers stormed in, guns drawn. They arrested her and freed me from my bonds. I felt a surge of relief and gratitude, knowing that I had narrowly escaped a gruesome fate. As I walked out of the cabin, into the bright sunlight, I felt like I had been reborn. I had faced my worst nightmare and emerged victorious. But I knew that the memory of this horror story would haunt me for the rest of my life. As I stepped out into the sunlight, I could hear my heart pounding in my chest. My mind was still reeling from the horrors I had just experienced. The police officers were talking to each other in hushed tones, examining the cabin for any evidence that could incriminate the woman who had kidnapped me. I stood there, feeling numb and disoriented, unsure of what to do next. Suddenly, one of the officers approached me. 
Are you okay, sir? He asked, his voice gentle and reassuring. I nodded, unable to find my voice. My mind was still consumed by the images of the deranged woman, her eyes gleaming with madness as she approached me with a knife. The officer took me by the arm and led me away from the cabin. As we walked towards his car, I saw the woman being handcuffed and taken away. She didn't seem remorseful or frightened, but rather defiant, as if she believed that what she had done was somehow justified. I got into the car, feeling shaken and vulnerable. The officer drove me to the police station, where I was interviewed by a detective. I told him everything that had happened, every detail of my encounter with the woman on Tinder. The detective listened intently, his expression grave and serious. When I was done, he sighed and shook his head. We've been looking for this woman for a long time, he said. She's been responsible for several abductions in the area, but we could never catch her. We got lucky this time. I shuddered, realizing that I had come dangerously close to becoming another statistic in her long list of victims. The thought of it made my blood run cold. As I left the police station and headed back to my apartment, I couldn't shake off the feeling of dread that had settled in my stomach. I knew that I had survived a horror story, but the memory of it would haunt me for a long time. For weeks, I had trouble sleeping, plagued by nightmares and visions of the woman's crazed eyes. Every time I went on Tinder, I felt a sense of unease, wondering if there were more psychopaths lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. I realized then that the world was a much darker place than I had ever imagined, and that the line between safety and danger was razor thin. I knew that I had to be more careful, more vigilant, more aware of the dangers that lurked around every corner. But deep down, I knew that I would never forget the horror story of that Tinder match, and the terror that had come with it. Despite my efforts to move on from the incident, the memory of the woman on Tinder continued to haunt me. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, of being pursued by something dark and sinister. Every time I went outside, I felt like someone was following me. Every time I turned on my phone, I wondered if the woman had somehow managed to track me down. I was living in a constant state of fear and paranoia. One night, as I was walking home from work, I heard footsteps behind me. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but as the footsteps grew closer, I realized that someone was following me. I quickened my pace, my heart racing in my chest. The footsteps quickened too, becoming louder and more urgent. I turned around and saw a figure in the shadows, shrouded in darkness. I couldn't make out their face, but I knew that it was the woman from Tinder. My legs turned to jelly as I tried to run, but my feet refused to move. The woman drew closer, her footsteps echoing in my ears. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my neck. I stumbled and fell to the ground, writhing in agony. I saw the woman approach me, her eyes glowing with a malevolent light. I told you we were meant to be together, I, she said, her voice low and menacing. And now, we will be. Forever. I realized then that the woman had injected me with some kind of drug, one that was paralyzing my body and numbing my mind. I was helpless, at her mercy. She picked me up and carried me away, into the darkness. I saw nothing but the glimmer of her eyes, shining like beacons in the night. She took me to an abandoned warehouse, where she tied me up and left me to rot. I was trapped, alone and terrified, with no hope of escape. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. I lost track of time, lost track of everything except the sound of my own breathing and the sound of her footsteps, coming closer and closer. I knew that I was going to die, that my life was over. But even in the face of death, I refused to give up. I refused to let the woman win. I struggled against my bonds, my muscles aching with the effort. And then, something amazing happened. The ropes gave way, and I was free. I ran as fast as I could, stumbling and falling, but always getting back up again. I didn't know where I was going, but I knew that I had to keep moving, had to keep running. As I burst out into the daylight, gasping for air, I realized that I had survived. I had escaped the horror story of the woman on Tinder, and lived to tell the tale. But even as I walked away, I knew that the memory of that night would never leave me. It would always be there, lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike again. 
For weeks after my escape, I couldn't shake off the feeling that the woman from Tinder was still out there, watching me, waiting for her chance to strike again. Every time I heard footsteps behind me, my heart would skip a beat. Every time my phone buzzed, I would jump. I tried to convince myself that I was being paranoid, that I was safe now. But deep down, I knew that the woman was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for her next victim. One night, as I was getting ready for bed, I heard a tapping at my window. At first, I thought it was just a tree branch, but then the tapping grew louder and more insistent. I approached the window cautiously, my heart pounding in my chest. And then I saw her, the woman from Tinder, staring back at me with those same glowing eyes. I screamed and backed away from the window, but she didn't go away. Instead, she started to climb up the side of the building, her fingers finding purchase on the bricks. I ran out of my room and locked myself in the bathroom, my mind racing with fear and panic. I could hear her outside, scratching at the door, trying to get in. And then, all of a sudden, the scratching stopped. There was a moment of silence, and then I heard her voice, low and menacing. I told you we were meant to be together, I, she said. And now, we will be. Forever. I knew then that I was trapped. There was no escape from the woman, no way to outrun her or outsmart her. She had me in her clutches, and there was nothing I could do to stop her. I braced myself for the worst, but then there was a sudden crash and a loud thud. I heard the woman scream, and then everything went quiet. I hesitantly opened the bathroom door, and what I saw next will haunt me forever. The woman from Tinder lay motionless on the ground, her body broken and twisted. And then I saw him, a man in a black hoodie, standing over her body. He turned to me and held out a hand, gesturing for me to come with him. I didn't know who he was, or what his intentions were, but I knew that I had to trust him. I took his hand, and together we ran into the night, leaving the horror story of the woman on Tinder behind us. As we ran through the dark alleyways, my mind was reeling with questions. Who was the man in the black hoodie? Why had he saved me? And most importantly, what was his connection to the woman from Tinder? I didn't have to wait long for answers. We soon arrived at a rundown building on the outskirts of town. The man led me inside and down a long, dimly lit hallway. We came to a door, which he unlocked with a key. Inside the room was a small, cramped space with barely enough room for the two of us. The man turned on a lamp, revealing a dusty old computer and a stack of papers on a desk. I'm sorry for all of this, he said, turning to me with a solemn expression. But I needed to save you. I've been watching you for months ever since I saw you on Tinder. My heart sank. Had I escaped one predator only to end up with another? But the man continued. I'm a private investigator, and I was hired by your ex-boyfriend to find out what happened to you after you disappeared. That woman on Tinder was working for him, trying to lure you back to him so he could hurt you again. I was speechless. My ex-boyfriend, who I had thought was out of my life forever, had hired someone to stalk me and bring me back to him. And this man in front of me had been watching over me all this time, protecting me from harm. But the story wasn't over yet. As we continued talking, the man's phone rang. He answered it and spoke briefly, his face growing pale. I have to go, he said, grabbing his jacket. There's been a development in another case I'm working on. But I want you to be safe, so I'm going to give you my card. If you need anything, anything at all, call me. He handed me his card and rushed out the door. I was alone once again, my mind spinning with everything that had happened. But as I looked at the card, I noticed something strange, the name on it wasn't the same as the name he had given me. And that's when the triple plot twist hit me like a ton of bricks. The man who had saved me from the woman on Tinder wasn't a private investigator at all, he was an imposter, pretending to be someone he wasn't. And the woman on Tinder, the one who had tried to kill me, had been working for someone else entirely, someone who wanted me dead for reasons I couldn't even begin to fathom. But the biggest twist of all was yet to come. As I sat there in the dark, clutching the stranger's card, I realized that the name on it wasn't just any name. It was the name of the man who had kidnapped me in the first place, my ex-boyfriend. 
and I knew then that the horror story was far from over, and that I would have to fight with all my strength to survive the night. As I sat there in the dark, trembling with fear, I suddenly heard a knock on the door. My heart skipped a beat as I wondered if it was my ex-boyfriend, come to finish what he had started. But to my surprise, when I opened the door, I was greeted by a group of people in costumes, it was Halloween night, and they had come trick-or-treating. I let out a sigh of relief, realizing how silly I had been to let my imagination run wild. I laughed at myself for getting so worked up over nothing and invited the group in for some candy. As we sat around the small room, sharing stories and laughs, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the strange turn of events. If it wasn't for the woman on Tinder, the man in the black hoodie, and the imposter private investigator, I would have never met these kind strangers who had brought light to my dark night. And so, as the group said their goodbyes and left the room, I couldn't help but feel that the horror story had come to a funny, unexpected, and ultimately happy ending. Thanks for watching. with you. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you again for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.